Welcome to an exclusive skill capped guide for BFA patch 8.3. Throughout the final season of BFA, we'll be releasing select guides from our site here on YouTube. If you're interested in seeing more new content like this every week, alongside our exclusive matchup review series in which we cover in detail exactly how to win the hardest and most popular matchups, head over to skillcap.com. Hello everyone. Joe Fernandez here, and I'll be going over Frost Death Knights in 8.3. For this guide, I consulted Zpai, who's also a multi rank 1 Death Knight, being a BlizzCon finalist in 2019. Be sure to follow his stream if you want to watch more of his gameplay. This guide will go over essences, traits, gear, talents, your rotation, and the playstyle of a Frost DK in patch 8.3. There are only two major essences you need to worry about having as a Frost DK. Your go-to is usually going to be Conflict and Strife. Conflict is mainly used as you have plenty of powerful PvP talents as a Frost DK, which will be important to have in most matchups, so taking Conflict will free up a talent as you always want Chill Streak anyways. It will also give you a stacking versatility buff, which will usually be active throughout your arena matches as it's one of your best stats as well. When you don't need that extra PvP talent, you could opt to play with Breath of the Dying instead. This could be the case against many cleaves such as TSG, so you can trade a PvP talent for having more pressure, which could easily be the difference to having more pressure than the enemy team allowing you to win. As for your miners, you'll be using Breath or Conflict, depending on which one you don't have as a major, consisting with Crucible of Flame and Memory of Lucid Dreams. The Crucible of Flame gives a nice amount of extra damage, being nice for pressure during your offensive setups. Memory of Lucid Dreams gives you extra runic power, which you use a lot of as a Frost DK, giving you extra pressure, as well as more self-healing and versatility. As for your Azurite traits, due to the nature of the traits, there are basically two different builds you can go with if you have the gear for it. One set which is best against all sorts of cleaves where you have cleave pressure consistently, and another set for everything else. For cleaves, you'll want to have three Frozen Tempest, two Echoing Howl, and one Frost Whelps Indignation. This setup gives you the best pressure for cleave situations, which is why it's taken. You'll gain increased pressure passively and for burst, in cleave situations which could make you overwhelm cleave compositions. As for the other comps, you want to play with 3 Frozen Tempest and 3 Frost Whelps Indignation. This setup will give you the biggest damage during your offensive goes, as you pop Pillar of Frost during these offensive goes, giving you a chunk of extra damage during the times you're most likely going to land a kill. If unable to get all these traits, then Icy Citadel could be a nice backup trait for Frost Whelps Indignation, or even Frozen Tempest if you don't have access to them, but ideally you'd replace a Frost Whelps Indignation in general. When it comes to your stat priority, things are very simple here as a Frost DK. You want to prioritize Mastery, then Versatility, then Critical Strike, then Haste. Mastery gives you your most damage, which is the essence of a Frost DK during offensive setups. As such, this will be your best stat to get your hands on. Versatility also gives extra damage and damage reduction, being an important stat in PvP. However, since Frost DKs don't usually die as easily, it's less needed in comparison to Mastery. However, it's still your second best stat, so you want Want to get this with mastery ideally on every gear slot. That leaves us with crit and haste being stats that we want to avoid as much as possible. Crit is valued over haste as haste is quite useless for frost DKs, not giving them much extra throughput at all. As for trinkets, they get a little bit interesting here as you have tons of options as well as the abyss being slightly unusual. The best two trinkets you want to get right now are the Drestagath and Vile Trinkets, both from PvE sources. The Drestagath Trinket deals an absurd amount of instant damage in a single target situation that could be used during or outside of offensive setups to date down your kill target. Vile of Animated Blood gives flat out mastery and an on-use effect that's a 1.5 minute cooldown. This means you can have more offensive setups with an on-use trinket, gaining more pressure during your deadly assaults. Outside of these two, you could use other on-use trinkets like the Badge, Bike, or medallion, followed with the insignia to have increased pressure during your goes. You want to make use of your on-use trinkets during your offensive setups to increase the likelihood of getting kills during these windows. If needing an extra defensive to live, you could always use the emblem trinket over the insignia or your weakest trinket. As such, you will use it to gain extra HP if you feel like you need it to survive. It's a low cooldown, making it very powerful to survive, but be careful as when it drops off, your HP will fade with it. When it comes to other gear pieces, you could pick up blacksmithing, crafting a belt and legs with sockets, 
ideally with heavy mastery and versatility. When it comes to corruption gear, you want offensive ones for more pressure, the best ones being Gushing Wounds, Infinite Stars, and Twisted Appendage. Gushing Wounds is the best value of damage per corruption output, making it an excellent pickup. Infinite Stars and Twisted Appendage will only be worth at higher levels of corruption, but still dealing significant amounts of extra damage. Other backup corruptions that are decent are the Masterful or Versatile corruptions, giving you a flat out amount of extra stats that are great for Frost. You want the 12% increase as it's still low corruption cost, as well as prioritizing the mastery one over versatility for more pressure. Your normal talents will look something like this. The only talent that will vary here is on the last row, picking up Breath of Syndragosa in Melee Cleave matchups, where you don't necessarily need setups in order to win. For example, TSG versus Windwalker DK. As either comps, you could opt for Breath of Syndragosa for more overall damage. Breath gives you much more damage during stuns. Using this talent requires that you also have Empower Rune Weapon ready too, and to be at 100 Runic Power, so that you can prolong Breath of Syndragosa, dealing more damage with it. Frost DKs have quite a few solid PvP talents that you can take to help with certain situations. The two staple PvP talents will be Chill Shriek and Heartstop Aura. Chill Shriek is one of the main features of playing Frost DK. It's evolved around your offensive setups and deals an absurd amount of damage against two targets, being difficult for most teams to deal with. When popped during your offensive cooldowns and if the enemy team has no answer for it, you can outright crush them with this absurd damage. Heartstop Aura is a Frost DK only aura, decreasing the recovery of all abilities with cooldowns required the targets are nearby. Delirium adds to the cooldown reduction of mobility cooldowns only. This makes it extremely powerful against any class with mobility cooldowns such as monks, demon hunters and mages. Simply keeping up to your targets with the help of your chains of ice will allow you to easily keep up hearts of aura and delirium making your targets mobility cooldowns much longer duration. Transfusion will make your death strikes costs less resource. This could be needed into when facing melee cleaves or if you're struggling to live in general. When it gets melee or certain melee caster comps, you could opt for death's chill in order to have more control and peels over the course of the game. It can be an annoyance against any melee, which if timed well can force them to use mobility cooldowns in order to deal with death chill. When dealing with certain warlock or priest compositions, you could opt for lichborn, giving you a lower cooldown on a strong defensive, as well as have a way to remove fear on yourself if needed. Anti-magic zone is one of the best team defensive cooldowns you can have, being excellent against heavy magic damage offensive cooldowns such as Dark Soul, Combustion or Vendetta. Using it when your team is in trouble taking heavy magic damage can drastically help during these situations, reducing the damage they take significantly, allowing them to hold on to other defensive cooldowns. Dark Sim can be an excellent take when dealing with Warlocks, Mages or Druids, being able to copy their spammable crowd control abilities. You can use this often onto their healers, creating excellent counter pressure or as an extra peel depending on the situation. In general, the rotation of a Frost DK is very easy to pull off, but there are a few general guidelines to stick to when dealing passive or burst pressure. For general pressure, you want to be pressing Remorseless Winter on cooldown. Using it on cooldown will generate excellent pressure in all situations, especially when in close proximity to two targets, adding to your cleave pressure. As we know, your burst pressure as a Frost DK is everything, so as such, you want to make sure you have your cooldowns ready, as well as use the right abilities to decimate your targets. This means having your Pillar of Frost and Chill Streak ready during your offensive setups in two target situations. Bear in mind you can use your Chill Streak with nearby pets on your kill target, as seen here by Zpai. He follows this up with a Pillar of Frost, which completely destroys the Destruction Warlock. Speaking of Chill Streak, you always want to make sure two targets are in close proximity as we saw in the previous clip, so that it bounces often, dealing a ton of pressure. Chill Streak will stop bouncing if targets are further than 5 yards away, so you can lose all that pressure if you don't lose it properly. You could sometimes use it outside of Burst Ghost if you can put it off as showcased here, using the Chill Streak whilst the Warlock is next to his pet. This will deal a ton of damage when the bounces go off, which can catch enemy teams off guard if they aren't quick to react. The last tip with your rotation is a more defensive one, being to utilize your death strike when you're taking too much pressure. You'll basically be replacing your frost strike with death strike during these situations. Using this whilst taking pressure will reduce your damage but give you much more self healing, making you much more durable as the game goes on. The playstyle of a frost death knight is overall quite basic, however staying on top of your playstyle effectively can make the biggest differences to being able to get kills or survive in the arena. One of those differences is constantly creating cleave pressure 
pressure, both passively and during offensive setups. This is due to getting a lot of cleave pressure with your chill streak, remorseless winter, and howling blast abilities. As such, you always want to try and create situations where you are constantly cleaving two targets. Even with chill streak outside of offensive cooldowns, and the help of death's chill to keep his two targets close by, Zipai is able to slaughter his opponents with his cleave pressure. This ties into our next playstyle, which is probably the most important one to create big pressure offensive setups. Every time you make offensive setups as a frost DK, you'll want to have death grip, blinding sleet, pillar of frost, and chill streak ready. These abilities will be the essence of making reliable setups as well as demolishing two target pressures in order to force trinkets or heavy defensive cooldowns from your opponents. The way you want to set this up is by initiating with the death grip on the target you want to include in your offensive setups into an instantaneous blinding sleet, during which time your partner can get ready with their cooldowns. Then, use your stuns in order to lock down your enemy team in place, popping your offensive cooldowns unless they use trinkets to get out of chill streak range. It's important to note that you want to death grip the target you want to cause pressure on, or want to set up as a kill target. This can be dependent on if they have trinket, or if they are a class that can't potentially outplay the setup. For instance, a monk could pre-teleport the blinding sleet to deny your setup, which would put you far Far behind. Also, these offensive setups are majorly powerful when paired with an AoE stun in order to lock down multiple targets and create great offensive goes. For example, against this Rogue Mage Paladin, we're in a situation where the Paladin has no trinket and bubble, making him a juicy target for your offensive setup. So z goes for the setup, gripping the mage into a blinding sleet, followed by a triple leg sweep, allowing them to crush the paladin even through the trinkets of the rogue and the mage. It's also important to make as many offensive setups as possible rather than trying to wait for the perfect moment as you may lose out on added pressure by not having as many offensive setups during the game as you should have. This is also important as waiting too long can mean the enemy team gets their trinkets or strong defensive cooldowns back in time to survive the setups. Getting in as many offensive setups as possible will more likely lead to a kill and the perfect opportunity will come in time. Making these these great offensive setups should always lead to trinkets or big defensive cooldowns being used when doing it properly. Without either available to the enemy team, you can completely dismantle them as Zipai does here. Outside of your big pressure, you need good play passively in order to lead up to your offensive setups. One of the play styles involves sticking to your enemy target. This requires keeping up chains of ice primarily on your target of choice, making it easy for you to connect to them, as well as limit their mobility due to how powerful chains of ice is. It's also great to keep up against other enemy players, but still prioritize it on your main target as we see Zipai do it here, using chains on Mage, then on the Paladin to be able to keep up to him, and then eventually landing the chains on the Rogue when he gets in line of sight. In general, it's also nice to keep up chains of ice on melee, even when not on them, so that they can't roam free on your healers, meaning you can peel them a ton simply by pulling your chains on them. It's also important to stick to enemy targets as most of the game will be playing with Heartstop Aura as well as Delirium. These talents severely hinder your opponent's cooldown abilities, especially their mobility, making it excellent against mages, monks and demon hunters. The more you can stick to them, the longer their cooldown will be on abilities, in turn reducing their pressure and mobility. Now there's only defensive playstyles left to cover. If you're taking pressure, it's important to keep yourself alive through self-sustaining measures. This means making great use of your self-defensive cooldowns, as well as death striking appropriately to increase your self-healing. Death striking whenever you take pressure will allow you to counteract some of the pressure you take. This is very effective during big bursts as you do more healing depending on the damage you take in the last 5 seconds. As for self defensive cooldowns, you want to coordinate this with your healer, making sure you don't overlap other big defensive cooldowns. Some of these defensive cooldowns can be lifesavers, as showcased here, paired with a death strike allowing Zipai to just about live. Last but not least, there are many compositions that you play against which require great use of AMZ in order to live. Anti Magic Zone is excellent against high pressure magic offensive cooldowns such as Vendetta, Combustion and Dark Soul. You may need to use AMZ during these cooldowns if your teammates cannot survive well without it. In general, it's usually always going to be a good trade for Dark Soul as it's the exact same cooldown and it will deter the pressure that Dark Soul creates. You also want to be ready to use the anti-magic zone when you sense your teammates may need it in order to live, such as this situation. We see that Minpoike is caught in a stun with the mage having Combustion and the rogue mage Paddy are going to pressure him a lot. Zipai uses his AMZ early on, negating a ton of pressure
pressure that otherwise would have forced multiple cooldowns from employee care or simply meant his demise. The anti-magic zone made him survive combustion as well as a double claw go from the rogue mage paladin, being a very effective trade from Zpi. That covers everything on Frost Death Knights in 8.3. If you like this guide, make sure to plus skill it and feel free to leave any comments or questions down below. Thanks for watching everyone and I'll catch you on the next guide.